Welcome back. I'm Tyler, you're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the 11th installment of last week Lolita News. At the top of the segment, Innocent World surprised no one with their announcement of the Union Flag series. The source of the collective nonchalance may be owed primarily to the fact that the print bears a not-so-subtle resemblance to the 2014 release of Union Jack. The names are a word removed from each other, and anyone with a working memory of your average domestic hamster can tell you that Innocent World isn't breaking any new ground by plastering their work in crowns. Surveying their base seems to have accomplished nothing more than disgruntling the elderly, and after listening to some woman talk about her granddaughter for 50 minutes, she acknowledged that Innocent World may be getting a bit repetitive. At which point she forgot my name entirely, and I was regaled again with the wondrous accomplishments of a girl half my age and with twice as many reasons to make her grandmother proud. I did not cry in my cornflakes afterward. It was Kashi Go Lee. Moving on to news not related, to belligerently supportive grandmothers with dementia, Angelic Pretty has stoked the masses into a raving frenzy with yet more images of much-awaited print Diner Doll. The 2010 Sweet Reminiscent series has the Sweet Lolitas poised to throw their wallets at the screen. The Goth Lolitas are too busy crying over Mana's removal from the GLBs to take notice, and the Classic Lolitas could give less of a flower crown about the entire affair. Blood will be spilt, bank accounts will be emptied, and there will come a reckoning upon this frilly land as we have not seen since the era that Milky Planet ruled the day. That is, if Angelic Pretty doesn't snort coke, change the cuts or color entirely, and shatter our dreams with the unmerciful fist of horrid design decisions. This is not mint, and the only boobs that would fit under that would have to have direct access to the warping of the space-time continuum. Speaking of things that fell flatter than the chest of whatever alien creature can fit their boobs into that dress, Angelic Pretty's Harlequinade Ballet remains fully in stock after a release about as bloody as a fight between two pet rocks. The lack of commotion might have been partly owed to the print looking like it was put on spin cycle with a jug of bleach, the strangely green gold tint of its trim, and the fact that the only piece half worth owning is both the most expensive and the least likely to fit anyone who has boobs and a vested interest in continuing to breathe. Inquiries into whether or not the OP could be used for hulking out purposes have been met with dark grumblings from the plus size community, and reports indicate that the itty bitty titty committee is busy complaining it's too big for their delicate frames. Both communities blame the other for their current dilemma. As that about wraps up the week, we turn towards last week Lolita News next special segment, in which I present you with basic facts, you react with necessary horror, and everyone involved lives on to be scarred on a level no rational human being should ever have to contend with. Welcome to Sex Pervs That Ruin Lolita Fashion. Or more narrowly, in order to trim down the playing field of people who desecrate the fashion through acts so heinous I can't be the only one hoping a bottomless pit opens up under their house and swallows them whole, Tonight, we talk about the DDLG community. So what is DDLG? DDLG, or Daddy Dom Little Girl, as the acronym stands for, is the descriptor for the usually, if not always, sexual relationship between two adults in which the dominant partner is the daddy and the submissive partner is the little girl. The relationship has its roots in the BDSM subculture, but instead of two consenting adults that agree to bump in ways the general public would horribly misconstrue in Fifty Shades of Grey, the DDLG dynamic throws out the more total control of the dominant in favor of a much looser parental role, while the submissive, or little, inhabits the role of a child. Did I mention that littles claim to occupy a mental age that can be anywhere from infant to teenage girl? Did I also mention that fucking while they're in this child headspace, or little space as they call it, is not out of bounds? Are you nauseous now? No? Well, you should be! Especially given that this particular branch of the kink community has a hard time keeping their business out of safe for work tags on Tumblr, the minimum age to make an account there is 13 years old, and actual children are poised to get the 101 on a BDSM branch of deviancy that no kid should be privy to before they learn whatever sad, underfunded sex ed their state has to offer. This is the age group that still giggles at the word penis. Can we not give them vivid descriptions of what you hope your daddy does with his? There is not enough soap in the world. Look. Maybe it's just because the idea alone makes me want to eject the entire human race into space and start over, 
But last I checked, even the kink community usually has the common decency to acknowledge that consent is kind of a thing. You know that thing where you ask your partner if you can fuck their baked potato? They look at you funny, and then you realize you've interrupted some strange family's wedding buffet? The answer in this case would definitely be no, but at least you asked. You did not start sexing spuds willy-nilly. Because that's just rude. Kind of like spamming safe-for-work tags that will be frequented by children who can't consent, tags like pink, princess, and kitten, with the kind of content that makes me edge just a bit closer to calling it quits on the entire human race. Which brings me to our next question. Why does it matter? Sure, your brain has the glossy, unwrinkled surface of a pat of butter, but you don't really see how any of this is a problem. Yes, it's as creepy as a marginally sweaty clown waiting patiently for you to leave your apartment at 5 a.m., but so long as they're not really hurting anyone, it's none of your business. Which is all well and good if you live in the kind of world where humans are well-behaved creatures with self-awareness above that of a lobotomized Dalmatian. However, that is not the case in this scenario. These people are not content to live their fantasy lives in private. I will say it again. The minimum age to join Tumblr is 13. You know, the age of an actual child. Guess what that child sees when she searches for the word princess with the safe search on. Did you get butt plug? If so, I have some lotto numbers I'd like your opinion on. And while you're at it, let's talk about how, in your mind, a 13-year-old can consent to becoming a sudden participant in the DDLG kink community when her photo of her favorite stuffed animal is reblogged with a vivid description of what the little will do for her daddy if he gets her one just like it. And then another little reblogs that, and then another, and another, and so on, I suppose, until the human race has regressed to the base state of a pile of horny amoebas. Or Donald Trump. Whichever comes first. Which brings us to our third question. How does any of this affect the Lolita community? Because this is indeed a Lolita fashion news show, there has to be some point to all of this other than, Dear God, think of the children! I know this might surprise you, but the kind of person who has no qualms on sexualizing content usually associated with actual children isn't exactly going to exercise restraint when it comes to pretty much anything else. That anything else kind of includes Lolita fashion and if you've had the pleasure to post anything Lolita related on Tumblr as of late, you might have noticed a few notes that weren't exactly motivated by squeaky clean intentions. More squishy intentions, as a little might say. Anyway, as the DDLG community gets its kicks through hypersexualizing cute things and the associated childlike qualities that come with them, Lolita fashion and related content is kind of like friendly Pornhub on steroids. Given that exposing your kinky lifestyle to children opens up pretty much any kind of depravity afterwards, it's no real stretch on the basis of consent when this community repeatedly takes Lolita pictures, reblogs them with their own disturbing tags, and adds captions that may or may not make you want to swallow the strongest cleaning products you have. I'd recommend the bleach if you're going for burn everything, and the Lysol if you'd like to suffer a little first. Either way, you'll never be clean again. Because while I'd love to say the Lolita community could just shove this roiling pit of degeneracy under the rug, the fact of the matter is that when the DDLG community takes Lolita photos and repurposes them for their own uses in supposedly safe-for-work tags, this becomes the public's first impression of the fashion. For every person who finds the fashion through the kitten tag who suffers under the impression that Lolita is some kind of sex costume for people who get their rocks off to being five, there are five more who run with that and request our Facebook communities for entry. Communities that play host to real children, as 13 is also the minimum age to join Facebook, and I personally know Lolitas who are only a year older than that. And now, due to a certain branch of the human race having all the cerebral development of a retarded cockatoo, that underage group must now contend with the chance that their card will come up, some deranged 40-year-old will solicit them for things that will hopefully get him shanked in prison, and the entire Lolita community moves one step closer towards utter collapse as the kinksters throw a wall-eyed fit at anyone who dares question the integrity of a middle-aged man getting his rocks off to pretending his adult partner is a fourth of their actual age. Because it's not like he wants to do actual children, 
He just wants to pretend he is. Hashtag kink shaming. I know it's not breaking news to proclaim that the Lolita fashion community is uncomfortable, even hostile to the promotion of any sexual concept. Whether that strict observance may be an overreaction to the negative connotations given to us by our name is up for debate. Lolitas used to gut you for showing the barest bit of knee, for God's sake. However, what is not up for debate is the safety of our communities for our underage members or our reputation as a fashion community. It is not kink shaming to protect our fashion and its members from people whose primary purpose is to promote and get off to the artifacts of those who can never consent. It's just common fucking sense. Kind of like the level it takes to keep your private sexual life out of the hands of the age group you're impersonating. Keep your pre-versions out of my frills, I'll stop thinking up various ways to call your kink community the communal equivalent of a gathering of feeble-minded magpies, and our two communities together can continue on into the sunset with the reassurance that we'll never see an ill-used stuffed animal ever again. Or this, you know, in case you forgot. Because that's all the time we have for tonight, thank you for watching last week Lolita News, and be sure to tune in next week when we tackle the tough questions like, has God abandoned us? Where can you buy canisters of bleach in bulk? And will you or will you not serve prison time for inviting a predator to your tea party, poisoning his cup with a cocktail of utter nope, and advertising your services to anyone who will listen? More on whether or not I will stand as a character witness next time on Last Week Lolita News. This has been Tyler, you've been watching Scarfing Scarves, and I'll catch you next time. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the last episode of Last Week Lolita News. I'd like to send a massive thank you to my patrons whose support helps this show continue. And should you want to show your support too, just head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time on Last Week Lolita News.